Hello and welcome to the Dimworks YouTube channel. Sometimes you have to change your speakers just purely out of curiosity. And that's kind of what today's video is going to be about. Okay, welcome to the Dittenworks YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about a pair of speakers made by Harbeth, and they are the Harbeth SHL5 Plus. Now, anybody who's followed my channel for a while, I reviewed the Harbeth Compact 70 S3s, and I pitted them against my Spendor Classic 2.3s. And as clean and as clear on classical music those Compact 7s were, they were a little bit more of a one-trick bag and the Spendors were better across the board on multi-genres of music. So I quite like electronic music, so if I put Dead Mouse on, on the Harbeth Compact 7s, it wasn't as good as it was on the Spendors. And I'm just talking in an emotional sense, your engagement with the music, how much you were tapping your feet and nodding your head, particular moments giving you goosebumps and just being totally not distracted by the loudspeaker and just immersed in the music. The Compact 7s couldn't do that for me unfortunately. Classical music they were phenomenal. String quartet beautiful, some soft jazz they were beautiful but as soon as you moved into the rock, into the dance music kind of genres, electronic music, they just they just couldn't do it as well as the Spendors did, which is why I kept the Spendor Classic 2.3s. And the Spendor Classic 2.3s have been my stable speaker for a couple of years now. I've tried loads of things. Some things came close. Some things were better in certain areas. But the Spendors managed to hold it across the board. But they did need a bit of tweaking. I had to add the Townsend Super Tweeters to give me a little bit more air in the top end. And it cleaned up that top end beautifully opened up the mid-range and actually improved the bass. And on that subject, the ISO Acoustics Gaia 3 feet and the Hi-Fi Racks 4 to stands also improved the Spendor Classic 2.3s. So they needed a quite a bit of fettling, as where the Harbeths, I kind of just plonked them down in their standard position on standard stands. They, there wasn't even anything particularly special about the stands. They were Haybrook stands I used in the video, I used something solid, but I thought they were a bit too tall, and the Haybrook stands were better. So, in all fairness, the Harbest didn't get the the best audition, or, or the fairest audition, in a sense, because they didn't have the feet, and they didn't have the super tweeters. But even putting them side by side with the Spendors, I still preferred the Spendors. Add in all the additional bits, and the Spendors were my favourite speaker by far. Anyway, this video is not about them, it's about those. Now, they share a similar base unit, maybe even the same base unit as the Compact 7 ES3, different HF units completely. And these are what essentially isn't a three way, it's more of a two way with a super tweeter on top. Now, although my Townsend super tweeters are sitting on there, I've yet to try them, but I will. So, in a nutshell, this video is just going to be about what I think of these loudspeakers straight out of the box, plonked onto something solid stands, plugged in and listened to straight away. So, let's see what I thought. So first off, I'm going to talk about fit and finish. The finish on these cabinets is phenomenal. Now, I haven't owned a pair of Rosewood loudspeakers since I had my Celestian A3s, and I do quite like Rosewood, if it's done well. And I've got to say, the veneer, the finish on these is phenomenal. They look absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful looking piece of furniture. As you can see, they have the three drive units in there. So you have got Harbour's proprietary um, radial technology base unit, which I'm pretty sure is the same as the Compact 7. Moving up from that, you've got a larger HF, metal dome HF unit, which is, is quite big 
for an HF unit. And then rolling up to that is that metal dome again, super tweeter. Now, you might think that's a lot of tweeters, but if you go right back to some of the early BBC style loudspeakers, say the Spendor BC1 or the LS36, Rogers Export Monitor, Spendor SP1, 2s, all of those, they've all got that three unit configuration. And in all honesty, a lot of that was done for tax reasons. The proper monitor, a studio grade monitor, could swerve some tax slightly. Now, I'm not saying that that was done in these for those reasons. I'd very much doubt it. I think it was done for a really smooth response right through the frequency range. So using that larger middle HF unit, you're probably able to let that play lower, meaning that the mid bass unit hasn't got to go up as high, lower crossover point, and then the higher frequencies, the stress is taken off that and dealt with by the super tweeter. So in a nutshell, the each drive unit is having to deal with less. So in the case with the Compact 7s, that mid-band unit would have to go from a certain point right up to a certain point, cross over to the tweeter, and that would carry on. So you're asking those two drive units to cater for a wide variety of frequencies. The same frequencies are being catered for, but it's now spread over three units. So as I've said, fit and finish phenomenal. Front ported, they're not as big as I thought they were gonna be either. When I unboxed them, I was expecting these to be quite ginormous. They are slightly bigger than BC1s, they're a bit wider than BC1s, but they're not that much bigger than my classic 2.3s. I've mounted them on a set of something solid stands. I haven't used isoacoustics feet yet, and although the super tweeters from Townsend are sitting on the top, they're not plugged in. That's gonna be for an experiment later on. I'm just purely going to listen to these as they came out of the box. Okay, let's have a chat about that. So for about 20 something years, I've always wanted a pair of Celestian Kingstons. I finally got a pair, as I'm sure many of my Facebook followers will know, I bombarded many a page with pictures of my new Kingstons. And that 20 year journey coming to an end was very satisfying for me. But I will say this, that those loudspeakers were a very refined surgical precision instrument that they really torture a bad recording. If you play something exceptionally well recorded, you are highly rewarded, but they will not cover over anything. They are brutally honest, very honest, the most truthful loudspeakers in that sense, because they offer no coloration. There's very little cabinet resonance. You're getting a very true accurate, realistic sound from the loudspeakers. They're not adding anything. And I've got to say, it took my ears a little while to adjust because my Spendors were that BBC lent on technology, the lossy cabinets, very sort of rolled off HF, beautiful musicality, somewhat lacking in absolute detail, which is why I needed to use those Townsend Super Tweeters. But I loved them. They were very musical and very engaging. Moved to the Kingstons, it took my ears a little while to go from that really musical kind of coloured sound that really does put rose-tinted glasses on everything. They sound beautiful, even on lesser recordings. Okay, if you put something really bad on, it's really bad. It would be bad on anything. But I was very used to that, and I was very much in love with that sound, the same as I was with LS35As, any of the lossy cabinets I've had, what you were getting with the Spendor Classic 2.3s was modern power handling, the dynamics that modern drive units offer, modern reliability, modern engineering in an old school design. And it took my ears a while to adjust. And I love the Kingstons, don't get me wrong, they are very, very good at what they do. But once I plugged these Harbeths in, I was taken right back to that sound that the Spendors offer, but I will be the first one to admit these were significantly more detailed. I don't think they'd need the Townsend Super Tweeters, but I will try them. Significantly more detailed, that wonderful rich tonal qualities coming out in the mid-band that just, you just forget about the loudspeakers and you just start listening to the music. So if we start from the ground up, bass, the bass on these is clearly better than it is on the Compact 7 ES3. 
I should imagine putting these in a larger cabinet is probably more optimal for that size base unit. The base unit is able to breathe a bit more. You've got a larger port system. You're going to have much, much better means for all of those standing waves to move around inside the box. Also, there is going to be more resonance on the panels. So there is a possibility these might be a little bit more coloured in the base, but they're certainly more pleasant and deeper. It's not as dry. I've got to say... The Compact 7 ES3s had a very dry base to them. Move up to the HF. Now the HF is, is, this is incredible. The level of detail that these speakers extract from the recording is somewhat phenomenal. Like I said, I don't think I'll need those Townsend Super Tweeters, but it's got to be worth a try. The Spendors needed them just to elevate that HF a little bit, just to extract a little bit more out of the recording was required. The Harbeth SHL5 Plus do not need that. They are incredibly detailed. They're not harsh. They're not bright. You can play them pretty loud and they will deal with it. I was very impressed the minute I plugged them in. I was just taken straight back to that BBC sound that I love. And that's not me being biased because I spent many years listening to far more rigid, far more modern, less coloured loudspeakers. I'm quite familiar with that sound and I, I quite like it but what I've got to say is is this kind of sound is far more romantic it's far more engaging it's far more enjoyable you just find yourself wanting to listen to the next track wanting to listen to the next track rather than skipping through tracks until you find one that sound good because I have had experience with that in the past you like these are good and you rip through all your favorites and Things aren't quite right. As where with these, I've gone for all my favourites straight away, listened to them in their entirety, and then just wandered off piste straight away. Let's give this more obscure track a listen. Let's listen to this, let's listen to that. And I have been immersed. I'm well impressed with the Harbeth SHL5+. Plus. Now, there are newer versions of these, and I should imagine those little tweaks... That Alan Shaw has done have made improvements but in this instance he hit the nail pretty square on the head straight away so that must have been quite difficult to tweak a bit more out of them just one further point or final point I should say on Harbeth clearly Harbeth don't offer that house sound because when I visited Chris Wiltshire to do the viewer systems, he's got the bigger brothers to these. He's got, well, actually the bigger, bigger brothers. He's got the monitor 40.2s. And I must admit, I was expecting them to just sound like larger compact 7 ES3s, which was at that time my only experience with Harbeth. And they didn't. They were amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I've got to say, these don't sound much like the compact 7 ES3 either. They're just deeper in the bass, more open. There's some richness to the tonal quality. The vocal range is just tremendous and the extended HF detail is just phenomenal. I was well impressed with these. Okay, if I've got time, I'm going to try and do some sound clips of these. I'm not going to do them comparing anything because it's a lot of hassle to move the speakers around and I really want to have a listen to these. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. It's quite short, sharp and sweet. But I really, really want to carry on listening to these. Take care, guys. I'll catch up with you soon.